So quickly, taking a look at a different type of reaction, these are acid-base reactions. Acid-base reactions are like a very special type of double displacement reaction, uh, where instead of two ionic compounds, you have always an acid and a base reacting with each other. Okay, uh, You treat it kind of the same way as precipitation reactions. You look for the most common species in solution. You see which ones of those are likely to react based on solubilities or based on forming a molecular compound like water. And so to start with, uh, Svante Arrhenius was the first to come up with a definition of what an acid is and what a base is. And so Arrhenius said that an acid produces H plus when it's dissolved in water. H plus is typically called a proton. Because if you think about it, a hydrogen atom is a proton with an electron. You take away that electron, you're left with just a proton, a positive charge. Okay, so an acid produces H plus and a base produces hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. The first real complete definition of an acid and a base. A bit limiting though because it doesn't take into account things like ammonia, NH3, which is a base but doesn't produce hydroxides when you dissolve it in water. So we need a, a more complete definition and so we bring in Bronsted and Lowry. Uh, the Bronsted-Lowry definition is slightly different. Okay. According to Bronsted and Lowry, an acid is a proton donor. That means it's a species that can give up an H plus uh, proton ion. And a base, therefore, is a proton acceptor, an H plus acceptor, something that can take H plus. So now we have a way of explaining why things like ammonia is a base, because ammonia can accept a proton and become NH4 plus. Right? And so it's accepted a proton, it's a base. Now, we know that H2O, the molecule, is a non-electrolyte. It doesn't conduct electricity. You've proved that already in lab. Um, so that means that uh, if you have large amounts of H plus and OH minus in solution, um, they can't be by themselves. They have to combine to form water, because water is a non-electrolyte. It doesn't like to split into ions, right? That's what non-electrolytes are. So that's what acids and bases are doing. They're going to combine H plus and OH minus to make water. That's called neutralization. There are seven strong acids. When we say strong acid, we mean strong electrolyte. We mean full ionization. Okay? You need to know them. You just need to know them. HCl, HBr, HI, not HF. Hydrofluoric acid is not a strong acid. You would think it, would, it might be, but there are some things going on with the HF bond that make it a weak acid. Uh, H2SO4, of course, HNO3, of course, and then perchlorate, perchloric, and chloric acid. Uh, anything that's not one of those seven is a weak acid, is not going to completely ionize and split in solution. All of these will completely split into H plus and their counter ion. There are a total of eight strong bases. Okay, That would be the alkali metal bases, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium hydroxides, and then Calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. Anything else is not base, it's a weak base. So all of those hydroxides split completely into the metal ion and the hydroxide ion when you put them in water. You can see by looking at those that those are the only strong bases that we have. You can see why Arrhenius thought that bases had to produce hydroxide in solution. Because all of those are hydroxides, they all do it. Okay. So here's an example of how we would use acid-base reactions in, in a type of problem, stoichiometric type problem. So we've got 28 milliliters of nitric acid, concentration is 0 0.250, and we're adding that to 53 milliliters of potassium hydroxide, a strong base, uh, which is, uh, has a molarity of 0 0.320. And we want to know how many, how many grams of water are going to form, because it's neutralization, so we're going to form water. And then What's the concentration, the molarity of H plus ions and hydroxide ions after the reaction is complete? Okay, so we have a strong acid reacting with a strong base. So the first thing would be good to do would be to get the equations. Okay, so we can start with a full molecular equation for this thing, which is HNO3 plus the KOH goes to H2O plus KNO3. KNO3 is aqueous, it's a strong electrolyte, it splits, water is a liquid, molecular liquid. Uh, and both the acid and base are strong, so they both ionize completely, which means we can split them into their ions. So we don't really have HNO3. We have H plus and NO3 minus. We have K plus and OH minus. 
We have H2O, which forms. That's a, a non-compound. And then we have K plus and NO3 minus. Those are spectator ions, the K plus and the NO3 minus. So we take them out. We're left with the net ionic equation, which is H plus plus OH minus goes to H2O. For strong acids and strong bases, when they interact together, you get water as the, as the, the net ionic equation. Okay, So it's 1 to 1, 1 H plus to 1 OH minus, producing 1 water. That's important. Okay, the next thing we want to do is figure out how many moles of each reactant we have. Well, we're given the volume and we're given the concentration. And remember, if you multiply the volume in liters times the concentration, you get moles. Okay, so 0 0.280 liters times the, the concentration, 0 0.250 moles per one mole of H plus per mole of HNO3. That's because HNO3 is a monoprotic acid. It produces one mole of H plus per mole of the acid. Uh, that gives us 7.00 times 10 to the minus third moles of H+. Plus. We can do the same thing with the base. Volume times molarity. KOH produces one mole of OH- minus per mole of KOH. Now, if we were using something like calcium hydroxide, CaOH2, then that third conversion there would be two moles of OH- minus per mole of CaOH2. And so we'd have to double our moles of hydroxide for each mole of the, of the salt that dissolved. Okay, so we've got a 1.70 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of hydroxide. We've got a lot more hydroxide than, than H+. So we know both reactants, we know moles of both reactants. What are we going to do next? That's right, limiting reactant. So let's find the limiting reactant. We know that it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio, which means if we want to use up all 7.00 times 10 to the minus 3rd moles of H+, we have to have exactly the same number of moles of OH-. And we have way more than we need. So H+, is the limiting reactant. Therefore, I start with that to figure out the moles and then the grams of water made. So I start with the limiting reactant. I use the stoichiometry of the net ionic equation. It's one mole of water for every mole of H plus reacted. 18.02 grams of water per mole. 0.126 grams of, of water will form in this reaction. Okay. Now, the second part of this was to figure out the concentrations of hydrogen and hydroxide. So since H plus was the limiting reactant, it's gone. There's none. Okay. And then we already know how much hydroxide is used, so we subtract that from the amount we started with, and we find out how much is left. And then to find the molarity, you just divide by the total volume. The total volume is after we mix them. So the, the 0 0.280 liters and the 0 0.050, 0 0.530 liters, we mix them together to get our total volume, and we get our concentration of hydroxide classic things to do with acids and bases. We're going to do much more with acids and bases throughout the course of the year, but just this is the basic stoichiometry of how we how we work with them. And they're nothing more than just a specialized kind of double displacement reaction. So it kind of incorporates the same sorts of things that you've been doing with precipitation reactions.